Welcome back. Both federal prosecutors and a federal grand jury contend former President Donald J. Trump knowingly violated the law by hoarding dozens of top secret documents and then conspiring to prevent their return to the government. The case against Trump is clearly robust and includes eyewitness testimony. And yet, these latest criminal allegations appear to have done little to crack the resolve of the Republican frontrunner's base of support. Stephen, was Congressman Weber's weaponization take uh, consistent with what you're hearing from Trump backing lawmakers in North Texas? Well, yeah, and that's why I use the word loyalty. I mean, uh, regardless of if they think the former president committed any crimes or not, they're sticking with their guy. He's the leading Republican candidate and was already a crowded field, and so they're being loyal to their man. Now, I've talked to some prosecutors, former federal prosecutors who are Republicans who told me on the, on the federal side, it's not just going to be a, a sloppy indictment. They believe that these are actual facts. I mean, look at the pictures. You have boxes in a bathroom on a stage. It's not just something that is just made up. And so, yes, uh, the Republicans who are still in Team Trump are being loyal to their man, but this evidence is very visible. Okay, Rudy, you heard Weber's double standard argument, essentially that others like President Biden and Hillary Clinton got away with illegal retention. Why shouldn't Trump? Do you think Republican yep. and independent voters buy that or do they see the obstruction component as making any difference? You know, Greg, the uh, optics are certainly really bad, but the one thing that I keep hearing about that comparison is, Biden and Pence in the recent document cases, they didn't stonewall. They didn't fight back like Trump has done. And in the Hillary Clinton case, the FBI, you got to remember this, they gave her a free pass despite pointing out, right, the actions that she did seem to be more glaring examples of obstruction. Not going to argue that, that those are valid points. This fight, from what I'm reading, is really going to come down to the interpretation of the Personal Records Act, the Presidential Personal Records Act, and how the Trump team gathered up all those items in those last days that they were in the White House and moved out. Now, if Team Trump had just opened up his doors in Florida, just opened them up from the beginning and told the archives team, all right, take the boxes, and, you know, we just want the rights to have access recognized. You know, we really wouldn't be dealing with this procedural fight, uh, these, this indictment. We'd be dealing with the other indictments, right? So um, he kind of made his bed in this, and I think that is a big problem that a lot of independent voters are having with this situation. If he had just given up the boxes, we wouldn't be here. Stephen, while most Texas Republicans in Congress, including Senator Ted Cruz, are still loudly backing Trump, a significant number are not saying much at all, really. Folks like Congressman Michael McCall and Dan Crenshaw, as well as Senator John Cornyn. Is this the beginning of a drift away from the former president? I mean, and you said it there in, in your interview. I mean, senior Senator John Cornyn has said he doesn't think President Trump is the guy for 2024. Now, President Trump has a loyal following. He has a big following, and that following isn't going to go away. But is this a case of just they're louder than what the other Republicans and independents who are planning to vote in 2024 want for the direction of the country. Now, I think some of these lawmakers, of course, I know you'll talk about Democrats, but some of these Republican lawmakers are sitting on sideline because I don't think they really have anything to gain by defending Trump right now. I, they've either just won a re-election, so they're in their seat, or they are hoping that this fizzles out so they can back who they really want to back in 2024. Along those lines, Rudy, with the exception of Chris Christie and Asa Hutchinson, other Republicans vying for the nomination have been speaking out in favor of Mr. Trump and against the Justice Department. What do you make of that play? I mean, how do you peel off his support without pointing out his weakness? Yeah, you know, and Greg, this is why my word earlier was bull moose. It's a throwback to the fail, failed re-election bid of Teddy Roosevelt. You know, the Rough Rider was a showman just like Trump. He loved the limelight, hated rejection, and because he just could not back off after losing the Republican nomination, the party meltdown happened, and that provided Woodrow Wilson a clear path to the White House back then. So what happened in 20, uh, 1912 seems to be a rebooting again now in 2023, but this time with a lot more voices screaming underneath that GOP tent. Greg? Quickly, Stephen, quickly, Stephen, Democrats gotta be loving this. 
Yeah, they're enjoying this, and you see that a lot of them are really silent, especially current President Joe Biden. They're letting the Republicans fight this out, and they'll see how they fare on the other end. Okay, let's leave it there. To see this interview and others, go to our Fox Station's YouTube pages. And you can continue the conversation with us on social media. The Fox Texas Trio will be back next week for another edition of Texas Issue Is. Until then, let us know what you think the issue is.